fantastic, man. We've had an insane bracket with some insane upsets so far. Over 300 people entered this bracket to try and get that one summit spot, but it's all come down to this. We're in top eight winner's side. We've got Karama taking on Ned, the Mario versus the Sephiroth. And we're gonna see who comes out on top as we start out on Pokemon Stadium 2. Now it's gonna be a very tough match for Ned because as soon as Mario gets into, essentially into the, the sword range against Ned, he's gonna be, well, we're gonna see Ned become combo food for Karama, but so it's really gonna be up to Ned to just keep him out zoning with that giant sword that Sephiroth has. Yeah, it's a really difficult game as soon as Mario gets in, like you mentioned, especially because Sephiroth is so light. Mario has the opportunity to kill him extremely early. But one thing that Ned is really, really good at is keeping him out. But here's that first opportunity that you mentioned. He's going to take 59 off of it, but he gets himself out of dodge pretty safely. And now we just reset back to neutral, keeping Honestly, that space. 59 is probably a good sign for Ned because that easily could have been a stock, especially with the positioning that Karama was setting up Ned. He was looking for the forward air, and if Ned, even if Ned had DI'd in, he he still may have just lost that stock. So 59, 77, I'll take that over losing my stock. But here you go, you can actually see Karama forcing Ned to approach, uh, which is why we see like Ned approaching with these, these nares and even like trying to trap with these forwarders. But here we go, this is the ledge trap situation. He's got the one wing out, he's got the comeback mechanic, so he's going to try and make use of that super armor on his smash attacks. I've seen Ned go for those down smashes a lot in this kind of situation. Mario being a very short character is going to be able to duck underneath those fares, underneath those back airs. Ned kind of struggling to hit, but when he does, he does hit like a truck. So keeping Kurama stuck off stage, trying to get him, and that's going to be the scintilla to take him out down the first stock. Yeah, the counter's coming in. It's going to be a very strong part of this matchup as we're going to see Ned either drop off stage with the counter or even just use it above stage, trying to force a little bit of pressure, making sure that even though, you know, typically Mario's are getting back to the ledge very safely, uh, it's even at that, that point they're going to have trouble. But okay, up smash, no. No invisible noggin here. My sword's just way too big. Yeah, he's doing a great job of keeping Kurama out of that personal space, that little bubble that Ned loves to set up. Can't let him in because, oh, oh. but, oh, the turnaround bear going to get him right there on the ledge, taking that first stock down from Ned, but 55% extra credit on the board. Nothing to sneeze at. Karama's got a lot of work to do in this situation. Tries the cape at the ledge to keep Ned off, but the parry is going to lead to a big punish here. Okay, the up till extension. Here we go! Yes. That's what I was looking for. That's exactly what could have happened in the first stock, which is why 59, that's a, we'll take 59 every day in comparison to losing your stock. Yeah, and that was a critical stock for Ned to lose. This is still winnable for him, but it's just gotten a whole lot harder, especially with Karama chasing him like this. He's off stage. The one wing is going to be very helpful, but Karama's still in the advantage state. Yeah, I mean, we just see Karama really abusing the up air out of shields, and you can just see, especially on a stage like Pokemon Stadium 2, just how much how much mileage you can really get at because it pushes your opponent off to the side. You can combo off of it. You can platform reset with it. It is the essentially end all be all of your combo starter. Here we go. Nair out of shield. Now Ned finds himself. We're going to see another cape? No. Trying nice. to snipe with fireballs. But those fireballs, it's just a little bit of extra percent that Karama is able to get. It's not going to be able to gimp a character like Sephiroth. He can just go way too far. But it's nice percent to have. It's, it's a little bit closer to that back air kill, that back throw kill. Either way, but speaking of a back air kill, Ned gets the turnaround right right then and there, takes down Karama, but with 111 being sent off stage, it's not looking very good for him here. Okay, so one thing I want to note, or one thing I want to point out, Ned has uh, really been committing to just doing the uh, the quick input of the up and not really going for the Octo Slash, and that's something that Karama's really taking a, uh, notice of, because you would see that Karama would like really approach the ledge and trying to set up for the cape, that will work against the Octo Slash. However, Ned not going for it. Okay, there. Tries the Octo Slash to get back up onto the ledge, but Karama spaces it just right, stays away far enough, tries for the tech chase in, but Ned very, very smart to roll out, but Karama chases onto the ledge, gets the back air, takes him down, and game one goes to him. Karama played very smart, always trying to maintain the, the, the small gap between himself and Ned either trying to pressure Ned uh, just outside of his sword range to either whiff and then see that, essentially that being the green light for him to go in. But Ned, I don't know if we're gonna see three games of Sephiroth. Right now he's down one game. I think you try Sephiroth again. But honestly, if we see a switch to Pokemon Trainer just so we can see that close combat between 
uh, Squirtle and Mario, I won't be surprised. Yeah, I definitely agree that the Sephiroth was doing a really good job, so it's probably worth it to try it one more time, especially now that Ned has the stage counter pick. Uh, Town and City is going to do very well for him in this situation. So tries the Sephiroth one more time, and then maybe if that goes poorly, then you pull out the PT as a, a last-dish effort. But here, this is where it all comes. It's going to matter a lot. The first strike goes to Ned, gets that Shadow Flare onto Kurama, and he's chasing hard. I like that Kurama. As soon as he got hit with the clip, as soon as he snapped him, uh, Kurama just immediately just backed off, and Ned approached, retreats a ledge, trying to using the legend vulnerability. Oh, unfortunately for, for Kurama, the stage is going to come in clutch for Ned. Yeah, the Town and City platform just kind of gets him on a medical stretcher and takes him out of danger, but Kurama, not one to let that get to him, continues to push the envelope, push the issue, keeping Ned stuck on this ledge. Oh, buffering the getup attack from the ledge. You know Kurama wanted that down tilt into back air. Now resetting back to neutral. Ned going to try and chase in with that fair, but the parry from Kurama is going to force us to reset. Good landing up air there, though. Going to keep him back. Another parry. These guys are really on point with their timing. That's how you know we're back offline, man. Oh, you know, of course. This is the prime zone. This is where everyone wants to be. This is where the people are. Absolutely, and with that Octor Slash back up onto stage, that's going to create some much needed space for Ned. He's actually able to control the center stage for the first time in a while, but it's the run up, up smash from Kurama right out of shield to take that first stock again. Yeah, the most classic of Mario tech, the rolling up smash. You hate to see it work against you because you've seen it probably a million times by now. A million might be a little bit of an understatement at this point. Oh, you're point. right. We're maybe two million. <laughs> Either way, though, we did see it one more time, and I don't think it'll be the last time tonight if Kurama continues his streak. Ned, though, chasing up onto that platform, tries to get the Scintilla off stage, Ooh. but instead Ooh. he's caught by the cape. That would have killed without the cape. It would have sent Kurama straight into the blast zone, but instead he just gets to get right on stage for free. Okay, I like this. Kurama backing in. He's, like, dashing in and out of the danger zone. The, fall, the rising up air. Oh, the combo starter, a favorite of Mario's. Not really able to extend too much off of it, but here we go, the chase down is real. Goes for the double up air, more and more percent, constantly building up, but he extends just a little bit too far, lands right in front of Ned with that big old Muramasa Katana, gets the F, F tilt and gets the stomp. Falling with Nair, of course, that's gonna be the answer from Karama. Karama, what are you gonna do to try and break this wall of Ned? He essentially, or, or right now he's in the lead, but oh, catching that jump, that's gonna be Ned's green light to go in. Uses the double jump from the wing. I really like how he made use of it there to stay above Kurama, to make sure that Kurama wasn't going to continue to ledge trap him like he's been doing so far throughout that wow. set. And with that, Ned takes the lead in terms of stocks yet again. Kurama though, not really wanting to let him get too much out of this, going to try and take this stock soon. And I like that Ned was actually looking for the roll in from Kurama. He got hit by the rolling up smash earlier in the game. He knew that Kurama was going to go for it again and just use that information against him. The up smash ripping once more, and that's going to even up the stocks. Trying to land with Nair, though. This is so very close between the two of them. Only 41% separating them. Ned yet to be hit on this stock, and he's going to try and keep his distance from Prodigy here. Gets the back air. Going to keep him up on this platform. But, oh, there was a little bit of a missed opportunity. Had he read the air dodge, he would have been able to get the F tilt for a huge honestly, punish. Honestly, I thought Ned did read the air dodge. It looked like, because it looked like the way that Karamo was drifting, it looked like he was going to land on the platform. And Ned saw that. He was waiting on the platform. He was going to either get the F tilt, he was going to get the dash grab. He was ready, but the drift back from Karamo, that was so smart and such a good play. All right, there's one fireball. Ned stuck on the ledge. Oh, the rising up air. Okay. <laughs> Rising up, that was rising up air! Rising up air again. This is setting up for that fair. We know that Kurama loves it so much. Tries for the F smash too. But Ned air dodges through it, is able to survive. He's going to try and get back up onto stage with this Octo Slash. But 78 to 77, this is anyone's game right now, Z-Fly. Such good patience from Ned using the Octo Slash and actually waiting on the ledge. And then more patience from Kurama. No, this is patience of the game, but the shield break. Yes, charge it up all the way. Devastation! Incarnate. Takes his victory lap with the charge there, and we're going to 1-1. One, one. Now, real quick, I made a mistake, and I already know that chat's cooking me for it. Oh, no. I said Muramase instead of Masamune. Oh. I mixed up my mythical oh. swords. What kind of weeb are you, What last? kind of weeb am I? Give me your weeb badge. Uh, here it is. Hand it over. <laughs> my weeb badge has been revoked. I hope chat will forgive me for my transgressions, but I think 
it's safe to say with the victory on the Sephiroth, I don't think Ned will be switching to PT. Oh, especially if he's able to play on these really long stages, these wide stages, which is going to give him the space that he needs and force Prodigy to continue to approach the way he has been. And honestly, I believe that the 2GG rule set is great for this. I was fantastic for. I was for <laughs> I think it's really good for Mario too, though. I was talking to Louis Money oh, about yeah. this no, before. No bad matchup. There's there's no bad stages. Like sure, he doesn't have the advantage of being able to go to Yoshi's and just wash someone there. But there's really no bad stages here, and there's also a lot of really good ones like Battlefield. We saw it earlier when uh, Kurama was able to take down Send. Send was forced onto a pretty bad stage for Ness in the form of Battlefield. Yeah, so really it's dealer's choice for both these players. Really no bad options for either of them. Or either we're going to have wide stages for Ned to abuse, or we're going to have platforms for Karama to really make combo videos out of. Really good spot dodge there, though, to avoid the uh, the landing bear. And Karama, you, you said combo video, and I think that might be the future that comes to pass here in a second. Ned really just struggling to get any form of hit in. Okay, the falling there. Really, that's honestly like so interesting to me because we see Ned landing these nares, but he's not able to convert. Now that was like the holy grail of combo starters for Sephiroth when the character first came out. But you can see the way that Karama's DIing, it's just not possible. There's he's he definitely has a lot of experience in the Sephiroth matchup. It's clear that he's grinded it out. He knows what he's doing because every single setup that Ned goes for, Karama either avoids it entirely or DIs it so perfectly that it doesn't work as well as Ned would like it to. But Still holding on to this first stock, trying for those F-tilts. He really wants that F-tilt. I mean, the F-tilt is what's going to give Ned stage control. It's going to put Karama on the ledge. I would be fishing for F-tilts, too. I mean, that's a bargain you can't beat. And I mean, with the wing, keep in mind, he does have that super armor on the smash attacks. It's something that Mario, except for maybe down air, doesn't really have the multi-hits to deal with. So it's definitely a big factor for Karama in terms of selecting his approaches. Ned, though, trying to keep his space and gets caught by the bear for his troubles. Yeah, abusing all the jumps, taking his time, and immediately getting a forward air from Led. I love the patience that we see from both of these players. You can see Karama really taking his time with his approach. Ned not pushing buttons, really. And I mean, he's got oh. the time, and there's that super armor I was talking so much about. Chases with the up air, takes the stock from so far behind Z Fly. Okay, what's it going to be? There's the one there, but again, no follow-up from Ned. He tries to chase with the dare, but he gets it! The dare going to kill! I've not seen that move kill in so long. Oh, that move is actually busted, especially if you're able to get the cross-up. But here we go, the combo starter, the rising there, chasing... Okay, rising up air. Come on, Karama. What is it going to be? What's it going to be? Well, it's going to be a lot of up airs. That's what it's going to be. And what else could it be with Mario but Ned with the down, or the up B rather, down towards the stage to try and get his feet beneath him, but popped way up by Flood. Yeah, we see something similar to the first talk of this game. You know, we see Ned essentially getting uh, about 80% put on him before he's really able to do anything to Karama. This, honestly, despite the fact that Sephiroth is a very lightweight character, this almost reminds me of how heavies play against Mario. They sort of have to pay an early stock tax where they get to take 80% and then they can play the game. And it's seeming that Ned is, well, he's being forced to go down the toll road. I mean, really, I, I, I do think it, you said it exactly. You know, you got to pay the Mario tax and then you get your wing and now you can play the game. You're your full, you're your complete character at this point. And now let's see what Ned is going to oh. be able to do. Oh, ho, ho, ho. the scintilla inches away from taking Karama's life there, but instead Karama gets the great setup with the down tilt. Ned tries the Octo Slash, but Karama just going to give him his space, and with the down tilt, back air takes the stock alongside it. Yeah, very, very aggressive for Ned to not only go for one Octo Slashes on the ledge after a regrab, but two of them. I mean. What else can you do in that situation? Ned, he would have had to go for a jump off of the off of the ledge to get past Karama, and Karama, I'm sure, had the option covered regardless. So Ned stuck on his last stock. Karama looking to go up 2-1 in the set and going to probably do it with a whole lot of up airs into a down air oh, for the kill off the top. What a stock from Karama. So not only was that a down air to get the kill, but last, did you see that? We actually saw Karama cross him up and then cross him up again. He went he back. He drifted in and then drifted out to mix up Ned's DI, which is why we saw Ned fly almost straight up. 
wow, what amazing play from Kurama. And that's really what sets him apart from most other Marios. Most other Marios, sure, they've got their up air ladders and they finish it off with the up B. They kill you on Yoshi's. Kurama, he's able to cross up back and forth with his aerial drift to make sure that his opponent is literally always wrong because I'm absolutely <laughs> certain insane. that he was reacting to Ned's DI there as well to make sure that he could switch it up to make sure it killed no matter what. I mean, that's got to be a scary position to be in where to a point where you don't, you're not even sure which way you need to DI. But here we go. We're back on Town and City. I'm surprised Kurama let him go back to Town and City, but I'm going to take a wild guess that he banned Northern Cave. You don't want to take Sephiroth to Northern Cave. I don't know. I've seen some Marios do some nasty stuff on Northern Cave. That one Mario that killed HBox at 7% <laughs> on Northern Cave. Oh, oh, but Ned at the ledge with the down air goes straight through the platform to take Kurama's first stock. And it's looking like this might be a repeat of the last game we saw here on Town. I mean, this is looking a lot more uh, disastrous for Kurama than the last time, than game two that we saw here. But at the same time, you know what? It's going to be Kurama's game to chase. Ned, he gets to have the fortunate position where Kurama is forced to approach, and he gets to, Ned gets to push the buttons that he wants to push right now. And I mean, that's the danger that you always play with a character as susceptible uh, to edge guards as Mario. His recovery is super linear. He doesn't have a lot of options to mix himself up. So if Ned gets a good read on him, gets a solid read on the timing, that dare is a constant threat alongside the scintilla. But speaking of constant threat, Kurama's combo game going to carry Ned from coast to coast. Yeah, remember, taking damage, take even at 80%, that is still much better than losing a stock. And at that position that Ned was in, Ned was in real no real danger of losing his life. So, I, I mean, even though he, he, Ned could have taken 100%. I'm pretty sure he would have been okay with it. Because look at that. You also got some extra rage. That's going to help you take the second stock from Kurama with the F tilt. Yeah, I'm sure he's absolutely okay with this. He's up two stock, or three stocks to one, rather. And honestly, not in that much danger of losing this stock right now unless Prodigy gets a big, big read. Yeah, even from center stage, there's really only going to be uh, maybe one or two options that Kurama has at his disposal that can take a stock off the top, and that would be like either rising up air into down air or an up smash with a read. But even so, even still, you know, Ned sitting pretty. Speaking of up smash, Kurama looking for one right then and there, but getting caught with another nair out of shield by Ned. And that's the big thing about Town and City is that Ned has a lot of space to work with, a lot of space to kind of back off and let his sword do the work, do the talking. Kurama doesn't really like that sort of thing with Mario. Oh, and Ned's sword is definitely do the talking. Doing all the talking that's required at the moment. Drifting back and getting another pivot F-tilt. Kurama having so much difficulty Ooh. getting in, but there you go. A width attack of, and one back air is all required. Trying to come back to oh, stage. And Ned, what are you doing, no! Ned? It gets a little bit, little bit cocky there, I would say. Trying to go for the big early kill on Kurama, but he still has another stock to play with. He hasn't dug his own grave quite too deep for him to climb out, but he needs to make sure he puts down that shovel soon or he'll be in trouble. I don't know. Okay, it's getting the back air. Okay, okay, okay. He put down the shovel. All right, all right, all right. Everyone calm down. Ned got it. <laughs> We're going game five. We're going game five. I can't believe that our first set of top eight is already going game five. What more could you ask for, ladies and gentlemen, here at the MSM LCQ? Honestly, if this was an LCQ, if it wasn't LCQ, I'd be like, you know what, Les, you're right. Who knows what could, what's going to come out from tonight. But you know what, last, this is the LCQ. If we don't see game five from every single set, I'm disappointed. disappointed. Yeah, I'm disappointed. I think this is the top of the crop. Every single person in this venue is looking for those amazing Smash games. Every single person in the chat's here for that, and so are we. So let's get into game five right here, right now. And we're going to Smashville, an interesting choice from Prodigy. You know, I like that. You know, Ned probably banned Pokemon Stadium 2 with the track record that he has against Kurama in this set on that stage. Very understandable to ban that stage. Now coming back in, Kurama off to a little bit of a shaky start, getting caught by that dash attack off of the missed tech and has yet to get a hit, but that down air going to shut me up right quick. Yeah, I mean, this is why I can really understand the stage pick from Kurama. He's going to have this platform in center stage, which is really going to allow him to extend his combos with all those up airs, resetting on the platform, more up airs into a DI mix of down air. But at the same time, it's going to allow Ned to actually sit underneath this platform and force a more oh, linear oh. approach from Kurama. Being able to tech off that, I thought for sure he was a little bit too far left and was going to die off of that. But Ned getting to live to see another day. 
Now resetting backwards, trying to get Kurama to approach him. Yeah, I agree with what you said, where this is actually a really good stage for Sephira, because that's the sword basically covers the entirety of platform from underneath. Oh, so if Prodigy's sure. not careful with his landings, he could oh. definitely find himself dying early, and Ned with a little bit of an odd footstool off of the ledge to get up and over. Oh, that was probably like a very pivotal uh, footstool, actually, because it, when you're in footstool, you actually can't input anything. Yeah, no, he, he <laughs> used the footstool not only to regain center stage control, but to prevent any sort of ledge trap from Kurama. Yeah, great now, defensive though, option. Literally 2.9% separates the two of these players on this first stock of game five. The most critical of moments, the most pivotal of stocks, and Ned chasing Kurama off stage, but not able to get the edge trap. Comes oh. back up, he's looking for it right here, tries for the up air, but instead it's Flood to make him keep his distance. They trade the Dragon Ball Z moment with the back airs, but still, neither one of them has been able to find this stock quite yet. A couple more F tilts from Ned, and he's going to land one, and there you go. Ned has the stock lead. Though still bleeding very hard, you know, one up smash, one back air could definitely even up these stocks, but it's really going to be up to Ned sitting on these platform, trying to trap Karama in with his approach and then extend his lead. He's up, uh, these nares out of shield, though, are oh. so good for Ned to make Karama be a little bit more careful, a little bit more cautious in his approaches, but just the blatant run up grab there to send Ned way off stage still makes it back. Now using the up B to get back to center stage right where he wants to be. He can keep so much control with the sword. I mean, it's really the positioning underneath the platform that's so, so intense for Ned. That's where he wants to be to really eliminate the approaching from Kurama. Now trying for the back air again. Ned, well, he loves those forward airs and back airs because they do so much to create space for him for good reason and trying to land a couple more on Karama. Keeps the shield up for the Shadow Flare though. So Ned, he's unable to find his inroads. Okay, Ned, there you go, landing in there. Oh, okay, here we go, Karama. Getting a couple hits of his own, but who's gonna get that one combo starter? Is Karama gonna get the up air? Is Ned gonna get the up air or the F tilt to retake stage Woo! control? A really good parry from Karama and that's gonna set up, well, I was about to say he's going to set up a huge combo, but Ned, with some fantastic DI, is going to get himself out of dodge. Okay, oh, landing the up air into forward air. Ooh, oh, no Ned, way. Yep. the scintilla, he doesn't have a jump. Karama's not going to be able to make it back to stage, and Ned has found himself a huge advantage here in game number five. 47%, Karama's not going to be taking this stock for uh -oh. some time. Uh-oh, or will he? I might be or forced will to eat my he? words. <laughs> okay, yep, Ned. Keeping a hang on to his stock, only 79%. Again, not really in danger of losing his stock just yet. He's still got probably another 10, 20% before he really has to start thinking about that. Getting a couple of nares of his own. Karama forced to retreat back to the ledge. Now resetting to center stage, waiting for Prodigy to make that approach. Ned, he has a huge lead right now. He doesn't need to approach, and he knows it for a fact. Waiting for Karama to come to him, trying to get these nares in, trying to get these fares in. Oh. That might be a big mistake as Ned gets the nair bear off of it. Yeah, maybe he's a little bit too antsy with the up B, and of course that's going to allow Ned to really put on the hurt. Look at how much damage blast that Karama just took because of the up B. That yellow up B put Karama at 98%. It's so strong, but Karama still has a chance. He's still got a stock, and where there's a will, there's a way. So he's going to try and take Ned's stock out here. But I want to point out the fact that Ned has a full stock lead, and he's still got wing. Like, where, where does this character come from? Oh, he comes from one of the best games ever. That's true. Final Fantasy VII. Where now my boy though. Cloud comes from. <laughs> Cloud High. I knew you would find oh, a way to bring it back to course, Cloud High man, always. every the classic. single time. That's but a classic. Ned still making it back to stage. Karama having a really hard time getting the stock off. And the up air from underneath going to send Karama way up gives Ned the opportunity to get back on. He almost got another shield break there too, the same way that he won game two. But instead, it's going to be the up air from underneath. Karama with some great DI is going to be able to live a little bit longer. Now just hopping in place and Ned reads the jump, gets the back air and with a two stock. Moves on to winner's finals. Now that was actually some fantastic play that we saw from Ned. Not only 